Hey guys, what is up? Carter here. I'm going to attempt a little bit of a, of, sorry, of a review of this Lacey Zavo Spider Co. folder that I have here. Um, I did my first impressions video and that is exactly what it was. I had not held this thing. I had not uh, opened it. Nothing like that. So that was first impressions, good or bad, take it or leave it. That's how those things work. So now I've kind of had some time to think about it, use it, carry it, um, and hopefully I can articulate everything I want to say about this knife in this video. I've got the pair of two, always a good comparison. You can see how much bigger it is. Freaking mammoth blade, mammoth blade. Uh, first off, overall, do I like this knife? Yes, I do. Um, is it perfect? No. Are there things I'd like to change? Absolutely. A lot of the times when I nitpick knives, it's actually not a bad thing. It means that I really like that knife and so I have kind of a vested interest in it. And I, you know, kind of like your kid, right? When, he, when they do something bad and you're disappointed instead of pissed off, that's worse. Kind of like that. Um, I really like this knife and if there were just a few changes to it, I would literally tout it as one of the coolest knives I've had in a long time. But uh, let's let's take a closer look. Uh, I mentioned this before, but we got really thick stock, four millimeter thick S30V. It is made in Taiwan, so this is, uh, this S30 is shipped over where it's used um, in Taichung, manufacture this knife. You have um, G10 scales with a lightning strike carbon fiber overlay on it. Um, and this is not uh, your actual lightning strike carbon fiber. This looks, um, from what I understand, this is something Spyderco made to look like lightning strike carbon fiber. It's much more pronounced. A real lightning strike, the copper weaving is really, really thin, really thin gauge wire. This almost looks like some kind of ribbon or something. It's, it's just a lot, a lot thicker on there. Pillar Ooh. construction, stainless steel liners, nice and thick compression lock. It has a hidden stop pin system inside that I believe does both the closed and open stop pin. So basically it's got a half moon milled out of the uh, tang and then it has a pin um, that's affixed to the scale which uh, stops it up open and closed. Um, it has pillar construction I don't know, did I mention that? Anyways, pillar construction, huge lanyard hole, uh, huge knife, tip up, tip down, left hand, right hand carry, hollow ground, crazy looking blade right there. Multiple ways to hold this thing. You've got your uh, Filipino grip, like so, which by the way is uh, freaking cool. Um, definitely, definitely. Uh, what's, his, what's his name? The... Uh, the guy that designed the Yojimbo, Michael Janik, or Yannick, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. His uh, preferred fighting grip is the uh, Filipino grip. You can also do it in the saber grip. You can choke up and do the saber grip. You can do kind of do the Filipino grip here, but you don't really have a place for your thumb, but you can hold it like here. Or uh, Lacey Zabo's preferred method is the ice pick or reverse grip. That's the grip that he, uh, from what I understand, what he likes to use. Um, and once again, you can choke up on it or pull back on it. I understand that this groove here is kind of meant for, uh, you know, arm checking on opponents and things like that. So everything's kind of designed um, for the fighting knife in mind, or at least most of it is designed for that. I, I kind of have some issues with a few of the features in that respect. But anyways, uh, black pocket clip standard. I did carry it and it fits fine. It, it goes all the way to the bottom of your pocket. Um, if there's any females out there that want to carry this, I'm not thinking there is, but if there is, you may have trouble uh, getting this to fit in uh, smaller pocketed jeans and, and stuff, or, or any guys that wear short shorts or booty shorts may have some trouble. But uh, fit in my pocket fine, but it, it went all the way down. It uh, pretty much buried in that pocket, but uh, not a problem. Uh, the weight, it is kind of hefty, but didn't bother me at all in the slightest or the least. Um, now the big, you know, the elephant in the room is the auto-close feature, is what they're calling it. 
Um, when I first read about it, I was really intrigued. I thought that maybe it would like slowly close itself. Now I realize they just put the blade under spring tension. Um, so once it gets to about here, it snaps closed, kind of like a uh, lockback. However, I don't think it was pulled off quite as well as they intended. It's very, very stiff. Um, it's much harder to open than say like a cold steel knife. You get a lot more resistance. You can flick it open, but you need a ton of wrist movement to do so. And uh, I don't think it's really safe to use that much wrist movement. Definitely cannot spider flick it. I mean, it's just, it's not gonna happen. You can spider drop it. Once again though, it's just, it's not very safe because of that tension. Um, so really the, the proper way to open it is manually and you can definitely feel that resistance. So it is not a quick open knife. It's not a knife that you can, you know, flick open. As you can see, I can't even get it to, to budge. Can't, uh, I've gotten this to work if I'm standing and I really flick it hard. Once again, though, not a safe way with the amount of force it takes. It's just not safe. Probably the biggest annoyance though is closing of the knife. It's really a two-handed closing knife. If you try and close it like your typical compression lock, it will not, you know, the tension's too great. It will not close, so it's always gonna be a two, two-step motion. Swing it down, break it free, then use your thumb to close it. It literally feels like you've taken your folder and just cranked down on that pivot to the point where you get a ton of resistance. Um, but I've actually got it set to, there's a little bit of wiggle actually in the blade. So I'm not sure if this is exactly what Lacey intended or if maybe the spring ended up being stronger than he intended, or I'm not really sure what the case is with that. Um, and you know, it's not a huge deal. You can open the knife, you can use the knife. It's extremely strong, robust. It's a deadly, deadly, wicked knife. Uh, but man, I just can't help but think how nice it would be just to flick this open like a pair of two, you know, go like this. That would just be awesome and how cool that would feel to be able to do that. And also, generally with tactical knives, I mentioned this in the other video, you want to be able to open it easily and quickly. That's why most tactical knives are designed with a light detent. So you can pull it out, you can flick it open, you can drop it open if you're going into the reverse grip. Or if it's got a spider hole, you can flick it open, um, or even catch it on your on your pants. But this is extremely um, tight, and you know, I don't think it's gonna budge either because we're not. There's nothing to break in except for that spring tension, and I don't think it's going anywhere. I have seen some people take this down. Uh, from what I understand, it's very difficult to get it back together, get all the pieces in order. So I don't know if I'll be taking this apart. I may get bored and venture into doing that at some point, but I'm thinking I'm just gonna leave it be. Um, it's, it's a cool piece to carry around and show off, and obviously, if needed be, this would be a deadly, deadly weapon. Uh, definitely a cool, cool piece that Spyderco has done, and it feels really solid. Uh, one of the benefits of that extra tension is it kind of gives you the feeling that it's, you know, just a beast of a machine, which it is. Um, the uh, lightning strike, I could leave that. I think it would look even better with just regular carbon fiber, but that's just looks. Um, but let me know what you think. I mean, I'm not trying to trash talk anybody here. I'm just trying to calls it as I sees it. <laughs> calls it as I sees it. And uh, I do find the uh, auto close feature a little, little bit odd, especially when mixed with the compression lock. A lot of the benefits you get from the compression lock is kind of null and void with the uh, spring in there, but uh, that's just me. Uh, just know if you want to buy this, you're getting an awesome blade, fit and finish top notch, materials top notch, design top notch. Just keep in mind that it is very stiff to open. I would not bank on it becoming any easier in the future. It may happen, but I would not expect it to. Um, it'll probably stay about like this. Um, so just keep that in mind if you want to pick this up. It's definitely a cool piece to have though. And uh, I, I'm, I have no plans on selling it or sending it back or anything like that. I, I like it. I really like it. Love that design. Hopefully, if enough people dig it enough to pick it up, they'll do a version 2 and maybe 
address some of these other things um, like that auto close feature and maybe even offer it cheaper. Who knows? All right, guys. Later.